So on this final video of today, we're actually going to go over uh, just a few pieces of information on WPE Commerce, uh, just to give you an idea of how this works. Now, currently this site is not set up to actually allow online purchases. Um, so we're not going to fully dive into all of the options that WPE Commerce allows because some of them have not been set up, such as a credit card processor, etc. But I did want to go ahead and just kind of briefly go into how to add products to the site. Um, so as you can see, there's a bunch of products that are already in here. And uh, if you ever want to add a new product, you can go up to this link at the top that says Add New. Or, of course, the Add New is also located on the uh, WordPress menu over here on the left. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at, uh, well, we'll do, go ahead and do Ion just to kind of get an idea. So we're going to edit that. And when this loads up, you'll pretty much notice that uh, the uh, e-commerce items are laid out a lot like pages. Uh, pretty much everything that you do on WordPress is going to, in some form or fashion, work like a WordPress page or a blog post. Uh, basically, everything is similar. That way, there's not this big change on how different stuff works. Um, so anyway, you'll notice you have the same kind of editor. Um, this is uh, you know, where you're going to put the information about the product into. Um, you'll be able to you know, edit it just like you would a Microsoft Word document, and you can even import uh, information from a Microsoft Word document if you'd like to. Um, if you aren't sure how to use the uh, editor bar, you may want to take a look back at the uh, first video on WordPress that goes over uh, how to create a page. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pretty much skip past this because this has pretty much you know, already been covered on the page section. Um, but you'll notice it's got you know text and links and whatnot um, that you can click on. Uh, so now we'll actually get to the part that matters with e with WP e-commerce, and these are the differences, if you will, from uh, from WordPress pages. Uh, the first thing you'll notice over here on the right hand side is the product category. Uh, you always want to turn around and assign the uh, the uh, item to a category so that it can be found throughout the website. So you'll notice that under the product categories this has been assigned to water equipment and to natural choice. So this uh, this specific item is going to show up under those two categories if a uh, user pulls those pages up. In, a, in uh, addition to that, you can also uh, select variants of the product. So for instance, if the item came in a white color and a black color, you could actually turn around and uh, add those in. And as you can see, it actually gives you the ability to uh, name the variants. And uh, you can also give it a specific weight. For some reason, if the different variants weigh more, maybe if you're doing like a small, medium, or large uh, type of item. Um, you can input the uh, number you have in stock. This system will keep track of that. Um, so if five people come on and, and actually buy the item off the website, it will decrease that stock by five. And uh, in addition to that, you can uh, add an uh, actual price for the item. And if you wanted to, you could even give it a sales price if it happens to be on sale. And, uh, of course, you can give it a SKU, whether that's an internal SKU, or you could even possibly use the manufacturer SKU if you wanted to. Um, and then you'll notice over here, to the right of that, we have the price control. Um, so basically, this is where you would actually set the price of the of the main item, not the variance. This would be the price of the main item. So uh, if you didn't have any variance, you'd probably go ahead and, and put your price in here. Um, and then... Uh, here you have stock control. You can actually add the SKU for your main item. And uh, you can also uh, add taxes. I don't foresee why anybody in the United States would actually use this um, as the tax amount is actually set up in, um, in uh, the e-commerce general settings. Um, so pretty much as far as the United States is concerned, obviously on the Internet you only charge tax if your business is located in the same state as the uh, visitor to the website. And um, once that tax rate is added into uh, WPE Commerce's general settings, it's going to automatically apply that to any purchases. 
Uh, in addition to that, if you want to, um, if you have a product you're selling for somebody else and they happen to have uh, like a data sheet or some other kind of PDF uh, that you want to send them to or even if you wanted to send them to the actual manufacturer's website, like if the item had software drivers or something like that, you could go ahead and create an external link um, and give that link a uh, text description. And uh, generally, if you do, if you're ever doing any external links off of your website, you always want to select the open link in a new window. That way, it guarantees that the visitor doesn't lose your website while they're moving around, uh, you know, the other website that you're linking to. Um, in addition to that, you can add an additional description for the product. And um, this area, the product download section. Uh, is not going to really be used for any kind of uh, physical product. This would be more for like software or uh, music, something like that. Um, basically, if they turn around and uh, select this item and it happens to be some kind of downloadable content after they've gone in and checked out with their credit card and the, the uh, item uh, or the transaction has been approved, it will actually allow them to download whatever program or software or music file, video, whatever that you're uh, offering to them. Okay, and then uh, the next section deals with the product images. This works a lot like uh, embedding an image into a page. Go ahead and let this load up here real quick. Uh, basically, this works the same way as uh, the embed section does, so you can uh, click on the from computer and you can upload files on your on your local hard drive. You can also uh, upload it from a URL if you wanted to, if it happens to be located on a different website. Um, and then the product images gallery is actually what images are going to show up for the item you're currently editing. Um, so as you can see here, this uh, this item actually has three different images that are going to show up. And uh, this kind of works like eBay on the website side where you have a main image that pulls up and then you also have uh, some little tiny thumbnails of the second and third image. You can click on those and basically be able to zoom into them and that sort of stuff. Um, so anyway, if you ever need to, you can turn around and click on the show button and you can actually <coughs> actually change some information on uh on that image, uh, such as the image size, you can give it some alternative text, or you can even trash the image if you want to delete it or replace it, etc. So that's pretty much how that works, and of course uh, when you're done you hit save all changes, and that will make sure that the image is saved for that product. Moving on down, we then have our shipping section. If you are actually going to be shipping physical items to people, you can go in and select the weight, height, width, and length of the items you're shipping. And if you wanted to, you can even assign a uh, flat rate shipping fee. Um, however, uh, most uh, of the uh, items you're going to be shipping, you're probably going to be balancing between USPS, FedEx, uh, UPS, etc. So um, what this system will do is, if you uh, if you add the the weight, height, width, and length of the shipped package to each one of the items, when uh, the user goes to check out um, and they enter their address information, specifically their zip code into the checkout form, it will turn around and uh, send a request out to the uh, um, shipping company that the user has selected. We'll take FedEx as an example. They'll actually send this information and say, okay, uh, we're located uh, at this zip code. The client's located at this zip code. Here's the weight, height, width, and length of the item. And uh, FedEx will return that query with a uh, quote on how much it's going to cost to ship that item to the person. So that way uh, the shipping will be automatically charged to the user during the checkout process. Uh, so pretty much the advanced settings, this is going to be related to uh, doing some search engine optimization or you can also see you can keep merchant notes. Um, so I don't know, like if you're going to phase a product out or something like that, you could put something in there so you remember to come back and do something later. 
Um, and uh, you can also have some other options, like a user can submit a comment on your item, or they can upload additional images if you don't have uh, you know different views of it. Amazon does this currently. And uh, you can also enable comments uh, so that they can kind of give reviews or pointers on the different products you offer. So that is pretty much how that area works. When you're done, of course, you always want to come up and click the update under the update button under the publish section. Um, and then one other thing to mention, because this is kind of important, you have the product categories, and this is the actual sections that the products will be listed under. As you can see, uh, this site already has a bunch of categories already set up for it. And uh, basically, you can go in, and when you create an uh, e-commerce item, you can drop it under these categories and subcategories, and it will turn around. And uh, you know, when, it, when a user comes in and tries to take a look at AirPot Brewers as an example, it's going to come up with all of the items that fall under the Curtis and the Bun AirPot subcategories. Um, so that way, the users can find those items. And uh, as you can see here, it's fairly simple to add a new product category. You give it a name. You give it a slug. A slug is basically like, uh, we'll take AirPot Brewers as an example. You would type AirPot space Brewers into the name. The slug would be AirPot dash Brewers, all lowercase. This is just a WordPress URL-friendly way of... Um, referencing that category and it's also used in search engine optimization. You can also give the category a, a parent category in case you want to list it under something like the Bun AirPods listed under AirPod Brewers. You can also give a description of that category. Um, in addition to that if you wanted to you could add an image or uh, target a specific country etc for that type of uh, category. And then once you're done, of course, you always want to go in and say add new product category and that'll add it to the site. So that will pretty much give you a rundown of everything you need to know uh, with uh, WordPress on how to add and edit pages and blog posts, which was what the first video covered, along with how to uh, insert images and video into those pages. Uh, on the second video, we went ahead and covered Gravity Forms. Uh, which is going to give you a way to collect information from your users to visit the website. And then uh, this video that we've concentrated on here, we've gone over the different options that WP e-commerce adds to WordPress to actually be able to provide e-commerce services to the viewer. So that pretty much covers most of what needs to be uh, discussed on how to, uh, you know, maintain and uh, add additional information to a website. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to contact me, um, website sohologics.com, or you can contact me directly via phone, 214-766-7168. Have a great day.